Good morning and welcome to you all to this service of morning prayer on Tuesday the 30th of March, which is the Tuesday of Holy Week, as we journey with Jesus on this road to the cross. It's good to welcome you this morning for our service together of morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only Son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross, and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. A song of lamentation. Is it nothing to you, or you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord afflicted on the day of his fierce anger. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. The Lord will not reject forever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion. According to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, send me the light of your presence, O God. Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamped against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter, in the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me, and set me high upon a rock. And now shall he lift up my head, above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy upon me and answer me. My heart tells of your word, seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor cast your servant away in displeasure. You have been my helper, leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of those who lie in wait for me. Deliver me not into the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me and those who breathe out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. 
God, our light and our salvation, illuminate our lives that we may see your goodness in the land of the living and looking on your beauty may be changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 1 to 18. I am one who has seen affliction under the wrath, under the rod of God's wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. Against me alone he turns his hand, again and again all day long. He has made my flesh and my skin waste away and broken my bones. He has besieged, besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me sit in darkness like the dead of long ago. He has walled me about so that I cannot escape. He has put heavy chains on me, and I call and cry for help. He shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with hewn stones, and he has made my paths crooked. He is a bear lying in wait for me, a lion in hiding. He led me off my way and tore me to pieces. He has made me desolate. He bent his bow and set me as a mark for his arrow. He shot into my vitals the arrows of his quiver. I have become the laughing stock of all my people, the object of their taunt songs all day long. He has filled me with bitterness. He has glutted me with wormwood. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, gone is my glory and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. Here ends our first reading. Song of the Lord's Gracious Deeds I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High. Who is this that comes from Edom, coming from Bosra, his garments stained crimson? Who is this in glorious apparel, marching in the greatness of his strength? It is I, who announced that right has won the day. It is I, says the Lord, for I am mighty to save. Why are your robes all red, O Lord, and your garments like theirs who tread the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone, and from the peoples no one was with me. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High. All that God has done for us in his mercy, by his many acts of love, for God said, Surely they are my people, my children who will not deal falsely. And he became their saviour in all their distress. So God redeemed them by his love and pity. He lifted them up and carried them through all the days of old. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord. The praises of the Most High. Our second reading is taken from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verses 24 to 53. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? It is not the one at the table, but I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table, in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. 
He said to them, When I send you out without a purse, bag or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. And he said to them, But now, the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, the scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, they said, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and the sweat and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and had found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but G Jesus asked him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved it is the power of God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved it is the power of God. So let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. And we commit all that we will do this day to you. As we walk this journey with Jesus through this holy week, though we, as we hear from scripture the different parts of the story that lead up to his arrest, his crucifixion, his death, burial and resurrection. We pray, Lord, that you walk alongside us, that you continue to guide us and draw us ever closer to you. In our parish prayer intention today, we pray for all those who seek Jesus. We pray for all those who've been searching these past few months. For those who felt a draw to prayer, to worship, 
to spend time in your presence, Lord. We pray that by our words and by our actions, we may be good examples of your love to all people, Lord, and that we, in some small way, will play our part in drawing others towards you. We give you thanks for those who've guided us in life along our journeys of faith, for those who continue to do so today, and for those who have gone before us. As we pray for our world, we continue, Lord, to pray for your safety and peace for all your people, and for an end to warfare and conflict and division where it is found. We continue to pray for the people of Myanmar, for those who have lost their lives, and for those who long for democracy to be restored in that land. We pray for Mozambique, and for all the troubles there. We pray, Lord, for the work of the United Nations, for peacekeepers and peacekeeping forces around our world. That at this time, when we face such a global pandemic, we pray that instead of pulling apart, the countries of the world would work together in this fight. Lord, we pray for all those who've used their medical skill, their scientific skill, their caring skill, to try to alleviate the suffering caused by this pandemic. We pray, Lord, that it would come to an end, that we would be able to return to normal lives, to be able to do the things that we enjoy but that we have missed, and to see those people that are such a big part of our lives, our families, our friends, our communities, to be able to see them once again. We pray for the leaders of nations and for our own government as they make decisions on our behalf, for those who have to impose more restrictions and for those who are working out how they can be lessened. For our diocesan prayer intention today, we pray for all those involved in funerals, funeral directors, those who work in the crematoria, grave diggers and stonemasons, and all those involved in the end of life. We pray that they would all be strengthened to carry out their roles with compassion and empathy, recognising the pain and distress caused by current restrictions on families, on mourners and themselves. We pray for all those whose funerals will take place this coming week, for families and for all that they need to do at this time. We know that there's been so many who've been bereaved in this past 12 months, so many very unexpectedly. And we pray, Lord, that we would always remember that the figures we see on our screens are real people, with families and friends who mourn them. We pray for our young people, for those who've broken up for their Easter holidays and those who are still in school. We pray for those who teach them, and inspire them, and for those who have the responsibility of keeping them safe at this time. We continue also to pray for those who are our key workers, for those who go out to work and those working from home, and for all who provide for our needs in our day-to-day -day life. We pray for those who continue to be furloughed, those who've lost their employment, and those who feel that great frustration and not being able to work. We pray for those who are preparing to reopen their businesses with all the work that they need to do to keep people safe. Lord, we pray for our health service and for all who work in the medical profession. We pray for those that we know, for those who have worked tirelessly these past 12 months. We pray for those working in our hospitals, for those on the front line in intensive care, those in the wards and those who work behind the scenes. We pray for our hospital chaplains with the pastoral care and support that they provide. And we pray also for those who find themselves in hospital today. We pray for our hospices, for our care homes and sheltered accommodation, nursing and residential homes. We pray for those who work out in the community to provide support and help for people to be able to stay at home. 
We pray for our GP surgeries, pharmacies and health centres and especially for all places that will be vaccination hubs at this day. We pray for those who will be giving vaccines and those who will be receiving them. And so we bring to you, Lord, those we know who are in need of your healing touch. We know that there are so many, so many that we carry in our hearts and minds. And among them we pray for Lisa, David, Jeff, Alan, John, Jim, Elaine, Susan, Kath and her family, Christine, Sister Catherine, Douglas, Steve, Joanna, Joan, Jean, Jane, Eric, Jennifer, Barbara, Pauline, Baby Thomas and Andrew. Lord, we pray for them and all those that we carry in our hearts and minds today, asking for your healing and wholeness to be upon them. And so we pray for those who have died. We pray for those who've died this past night, those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries of death occur at this time. Lord, surround all those who mourn with your compassion and loving arms. Help them to know the hope of the resurrection and the joy of eternal life, won for us all by your Son, Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race, sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this service of morning prayer today. It's been good to have your company on this lovely sunny day and what is going to be a, a, a warm day apparently according to the weather forecast. We have a service of evening prayer at five o'clock and then our service, our Eucharist at church this evening at seven o'clock. Hopefully with technology we'll all be working okay this evening and we'll be able to join together for our service. In the meantime, we do hope that you have a good day, whatever today may be bringing you and that you stay safe. Take care, look after yourselves and you remain as always in my prayers. Do take care.